Hey there, I'm Natalia, and I just moved from Moscow to LA to live with my grandma while my parents are still in Russia. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Imagine being a young girl from Russia, starting third grade in an American elementary school without your parents by your side. That's me. My parents sent me to live with grandma, and they said they would come when they got the opportunity. Fitting in at this American school wasn't easy, especially the language barriers. They can lead to some hilarious misunderstandings. One time I said, excuse me, can anyone tell me where the strawberry is, please? Please? Are you trying to find a fruit or a place to read? I I meant the library. Excuse me, can I borrow a racer, please? <laughs> sure, Natalia. Do you want a Ferrari or a Lamborghini? Oh, Here. I meant an eraser. Excuse me, can I have a sheep of paper, please? I have a cow of paper. Would that work? Hey, guys, cut it out. She's new here and learning the language. We all make mistakes, right? Here you go, Natalia. Here's a sheet of paper. I don't know why, but I just hugged Jake and mumbled a thank you. The whole class laughed even louder. <laughs> when are you guys getting married? Jake just smiled and shrugged off the teasing. Over the next few weeks, my friendship with Jay grew stronger. He became my go-to person for navigating both the school and the English language. We'd sit together at lunch, share stories about our families, and even work on homework together. One afternoon, after school, Jake invited me to his family's small flower shop. Jake's mom warmly welcomed me and offered me a cup of hot chocolate. As we explored the shop, Jake asked me about my favorite flowers, and I told him about the beautiful jasmine that grew outside my home in Russia. To my surprise, he found a small jasmine plant tucked away in the corner. Here, Natalia, I'd like you to have this jasmine plant. It's not much, but maybe it'll help you feel more at home. I couldn't help but smile. It was a sweet moment that strengthened our friendship and also made me feel more connected to my new home. I envied Jake for having such a lovely family, and I missed mine so much. Once in the seventh grade, my grandma fell ill and had to be admitted to the hospital. The doctor said it would be about a week before she could return home with no other family nearby. I felt lost and worried, but when Jake's mom heard about my situation, she kindly invited me to stay with them at their place till grandma was out of the hospital, and I gladly accepted. Jake had been telling me that his dad was the sweetest, but that was far from the truth. His dad was a very moody man. Some days, he'd be yelling at his mom and having fights with Jake and his siblings, but some other days, he was just a cool, cheerful, annoying dad. While I stayed in their house, I took Jake's bed and Jake slept on the couch. One night, Jake's dad burst in yelling, Jake, time for a little wake-up prank. With that, he splashed a bucket of water onto the bed, soaking me completely. Startled, I gasped and sat up. He immediately realized his mistake and his face turned red. Oh, Natalia, I am so sorry. I thought Jake was in here. Are you okay? But just then, Jake came in looking super angry. He pushed his dad away. Can you just behave normally? Like a normal dad? It's not always the right time to joke or prank. You're the most... It's okay. He was joking. Stay out of it, Natalia. My dad is crazy. I don't know why he's here instead of being in a mental asylum. Suddenly, his dad started crying like a little boy. It was so loud that he woke everyone up. This was crazy. But what happened in the morning was crazier. When Jake's dad saw me, he started yelling at me and threatening me for shouting at him yesterday. No, sir, it wasn't me. Shut up. Just leave my house. Jake held my hand and took me out. He started apologizing and told me that his dad had some issues and he was very ashamed. There's nothing to be ashamed of, Jake. Some parents just love their children in their own way. The important thing is to understand them and respect them. Respect a crazy psycho like him? <sighs> Easy for you to say. You're lucky your parents don't even care enough to come for you. Oh, darn. I'm sorry. I didn't mean... It's okay. Let's go to school. We're late. After that incident, Jake became a bit distant with me. It was as if he felt ashamed that I knew about his family secret. I wanted to talk it out with him, but then summer break started and life got hectic when my family came to visit. My parents and younger sister Sasha, who's two years younger than me, flew in from Russia. Sasha was a true people pleaser. She was always willing to go above and beyond to make others happy, even if it meant sacrificing something personal. One night, she and I went out to explore the city. We stumbled upon a street musician playing a dope tune, and Sasha started clapping like crazy. But then the musician just stopped and yelled at her. Yo, you're clapping just red my jam. What's the deal? Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to mess up your performance. Let me make it up to you. She quickly grabbed some cash from her pocket and dropped it into the musician's hat. Here, I hope this helps. Seriously, I'm so sorry. Okay, fine. Just take all my money. Here, please smile. I stopped her and took the money back from the musician's hat. In fact, I took everything and we both ran like crazy. I mean, I didn't take all the money, but he started it by being a rude person. When we got back home, I started yelling at Sasha. Can you stop being such a fool? Just be 
okay with making people upset, especially those who deserve your anger. Sasha, my sister, I love you. That's why I'm insulting you. Please listen to me. Just then, mom barged in. Lucky for her, she has her entire life to listen to you. We're going back to Russia next week, and Sasha's going to stay with you and grandma. We're coming to live here as soon as we can, honey. On the first day at school after summer break, Sasha was super excited to join me. As we walked through the hallways, I introduced her to my friends, and soon enough, we bumped into Jake. Hey, Sasha, nice to meet you. Your sister's told me a lot about you. Oh, really? I hope it's all good stuff. Because, you know, sometimes I can be a disappointment. <laughs> and I'm not saying this because I'm nervous or anything, but I mean, in general, I am a disappoint. Just then, the principal walked in, tripping on her own shoelace and accidentally dropping a stack of papers. Sasha immediately rushed to help her. Oh, looks like school's off to a flying start, huh? The principal <laughs> laughed at her joke, and everyone around joined in. I liked that side of Sasha. She's kind and always rushes to help. I could see in Jake's eyes that he was also impressed. Maybe also because Sasha was prettier and taller than me. Maybe now he'd like her and something romantic would happen between them. That didn't bother me, right? Jake is only my friend. I think you need to go stop your sister. She's giving away all her school supplies to some girls. Oh, God. <laughs> Things between me and Jake started to go back to normal, and the three of us spent a lot of time together. And Jake even started coming more often to our home. He almost felt like a family member. One day, Grandma fell ill again, and we were very worried about her. To make us feel better, Jake offered to stay next to Grandma all night, especially since Sasha and I had exams the next day and needed to sleep well. I think maybe he'd also take any chance to spend time away from his dad. During the night, I heard some loud noises. I woke up and didn't find Sasha next to me. I rushed downstairs to find a group of shady-looking boys about to leave the house with Sasha, who seemed unsure and anxious. Sasha, what are you doing? Hearing my scream, Jake dashed downstairs. Hey, let her go. Jake threw a punch at one of the boys, making him stumble back. Get Get out of here and don't come back. The boys realized they were no match for Jake and scrambled out of the house. I turned to Sasha, feeling confused and shaken. Sasha, what just happened? Why were those guys here? Please don't be mad. They said they needed me to help them with their science project and they were scared that someone would see them and tell the teacher that's why they wanted to work at night. I just couldn't say no. Are you stupid? God knows what they wanted from you at this late hour. This is not about pleasing people. This is just pure stupidity, Sasha. She started crying and Jake passed patted her back and winked at me to stop. Hey, Sasha is smart and I'm sure she won't do this again. Oh, by the way, I meant to ask you. Natalia, would you be my girlfriend? What? What a weird timing. No, no, it's perfect. I feel like I'm the man of the house. You know, just saved a damsel in distress. <laughs> so what do you think? I think I want to be your girlfriend. And with that, I kissed him. We started dating and Sasha got stronger and grandma felt better. Life seemed good and peaceful. Jake was the perfect boyfriend, sweet and protective, and I loved him so much, I couldn't imagine my life without him. Years went by, and we both graduated high school and went to the same college. We lived together until we graduated college, and it was the best time of my life. Then Jake proposed, and I said yes. On my wedding day, everything was perfect, and I was the happiest. Just as I was about to put on my dress, Sasha came into the room, her face filled with worry and fear. Natalia, I need to tell you something important about Jake. I've been keeping this secret for years, but I can't let you marry him without knowing the truth. What are you talking about, Sasha? Do you remember that night when those shady boys came to our house? They were actually Jake's friends. He promised them a girl they could take to a dance club with them, and he convinced me to do it, saying he'd always protect us. He threatened me, saying that if I told you, he'd hurt me. I was young and terrified, but now I can't let you marry him without knowing the truth. He's gonna be your husband and the father of your kids. No, you're lying. Jake would never do something like that. Maybe you're just jealous and trying to ruin my happiness. Why did you wait all these years to tell me. I was scared and I didn't want to hurt you, but I can't let you marry him knowing what he did. Please believe me, Natalia. Leave. Now, you're not invited to my wedding anymore. Soon after the wedding, we left for our honeymoon, but it was cut short when we received a phone call that Jake's mom had been in an accident. We rushed back to see his parents, who we hadn't visited much since graduating high school. Jake had mainly kept in touch with his mom through phone calls and social media. At the hospital, Jake went into his mom's room while I sat in the waiting area. His dad, who was sitting beside me started to berate Jake. You know, my son is a heartless jerk. You never should have trusted him. You made a mistake marrying him. Just then, Jake walked in and heard his dad's words. Shut up, dad. You have no right to talk about me like that. I'm ashamed that you're my son. You never stood by my side. You were born a jerk and I bet you're cheating on your wife. Jake couldn't take it anymore. He grabbed my hand and we left the waiting room together. I could see the pain in his eyes and I chose to believe in the man I knew and loved, pushing away any doubts starting to creep in. A week later, 
later, we both returned to work. Jake left the house earlier than me, accidentally leaving his personal laptop open. On an impulse, I started going through his social media and stumbled upon his Instagram account, where I discovered he was chatting with several girls. Some of them were even sending him their pictures, to which he responded with compliments like gorgeous. I couldn't believe my eyes, and anger surged through me. But the next moment, I felt a strange sense of relief. Despite everything, he had chosen me in the end. I began rationalizing his behavior, thinking maybe he'd grown bored of being with just one woman for so many years, and that somehow made it acceptable. I started to blame myself, thinking maybe I'd been too busy with my studies, work, and life in general. In that moment, I made a promise to myself to become a better wife and to give Jake the attention he needed. Days went by, and I did everything to become a better partner to Jake. I even decided to become a stay-at-home wife, dedicating my life to our marriage. I also made up my mind to get pregnant, even though Jake had suggested waiting for two more years. I thought a baby would solve all our problems. Eventually, I got pregnant. I planned a romantic surprise dinner to share the news with Jake. When I finally told him, he snapped. What? Are you serious? We agreed to wait two years. I don't want kids right now. I, I thought it would be a good surprise, and it might bring us even closer. Look, I'm sorry for reacting like that. It just, it caught me off guard. I didn't mean to upset you. Still horrified by his outburst, I told him I'd be sleeping on the couch that night. I said I'm sorry, but if that's what you want, then fine. The next morning, I apologized to Jake for my mistake and asked for his forgiveness because my reaction was exaggerated. He simply said, I forgive you. Weeks went by and it seemed like my plan didn't work as I could still see Jake smiling at his phone and I started getting depressed. One day, while pregnant and cleaning the house alone, I slipped. I called Jake multiple times, but he didn't answer. I had no choice but to call Sasha, who rushed me to the hospital. After the doctors examined me and said everything was okay, Sasha came to me. Hey, I'm glad you're okay and so is the baby. Jake is on his way. I'm gonna talk to him outside your room. Please, pretend you're asleep and just watch. Soon enough, Jake arrived and met Sasha in the waiting room where I could see them but he couldn't see that I was watching. He held Sasha's hands and touched her cheek in gratitude. I was stunned. Then Jake entered my room and kissed my forehead while I pretended to be asleep. As he leaned down, I grabbed the vase next to me and hit him on the head. I've had enough of you, Jake. Just leave me and the baby alone. He's been hitting on me since forever. I sent him a message an hour ago telling him I agreed to be his girlfriend and the rest you saw, Natalia. Don't listen to her. She's lying. Shut up, you lying jerk. Your dad was right about you, you heartless snake. I choose to believe my sister, to believe my own eyes, and what I saw on your laptop. I'm such an idiot for putting you first, but I know better now. I come first. I'm an amazing woman, and I deserve better. Just get lost, or I'll start screaming until security takes you out. Go to hell, Jake. You're such a witch, a stupid immigrant that I felt sorry for and took care of. And this is how you repay me? An ungrateful monster? He kept screaming like a madman till security guards took him away. I knew I'd never allow Jake to come back into my life again. I turned to my sister and I hugged her tight.